Hey y'all, welcome to my shop. I was just beginning to start turning a prototype of this three-legged stool project we're going to work on today. This is a really simple project. We're going to make the legs um, a very simple style so it'll make it easy to duplicate. Uh, okay, here we are at my workbench. We're going to be turning a project similar to this. This is going to be a four-legged stool we're going to turn in the in my next uh, uh, video, you'll find that description and uh, that link to this in the description. But basically, instead of four legs, we're going to turn three legs. They're going to be a little simplified and they won't have these rungs on them. So, most any kind of wood will do, uh, dried wood. Uh, I prefer two inches thick, but inch and a half uh, will work. Uh, poplar is a good inexpensive wood, but you know, if you want a nicer stool that you're not going to. Uh, if you want to paint the stool, you can use inexpensive wood such as poplar, which is fairly inexpensive. If you're going to stain it or, or finish it natural, a nicer wood would be nice, such as oak or uh, ash uh, or maple, whatever you get in, in uh, eight quarter stock. I'm going to use pine because that's what I have available. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut legs, cut your three legs, rip them out on your table saw or your band saw, uh, as shown here. Uh, you're going to make these 10 to 12 inches long for a uh, stool that's uh, 10 to 11 inches tall. We're going to make the seat approximately uh, 10 out of the same one quarter inch. We want to lay out the seat approximately 9 to 12 inches with a compass. So I'm using a Harbor Freight Special. Uh, you can get these for about eight dollars at Harbor Freight. Compass divider set. So we lay that out. Then we're going to mark an inner inner circle, an inch and a half from the outside ring. The reason for this circle is this is going to be the circle that we're going to uh, drill the, the holes on on this circle. So we mark that. And then, as you might remember from school, with your uh, geometry, we're going to take that radius and go around six times. It'll go around six times and bring us right back where we started. Then we're going to pick every other hole. And those are the ones we're going to drill a little bit later. But first we're going to take this to the bandsaw and, and cut it round. Okay, we cut this round on the bandsaw. Now we're going to go ahead and drill these holes. First thing I'm going to do is do a center punch to make it easier for the drill bit to find these locations. You'll notice I made a couple of, of wedges at 15 degrees using a protractor and some MDF. And we're gonna we're not gonna get crazy about getting this thing precise because we know a three-legged stool is gonna balance on three legs. So the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna draw a line between the intersection of where the hole the, from the center to where the hole is going to be drilled just to make it visually a little easier for me to line this thing up square. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I clamped a, a, a block there that'll give me some, some stability. And I'm just going to hold this in place. Uh, I've got those, I've got this marked. We're going to drill a one inch hole and we're going to start drilling it straight in and then we're going to move it straight up and that'll give us the splay we're looking for. we got to get it started first. And I'll go ahead and drill the other three uh, off camera and then we'll move, move back to the lathe. Okay, we're just about ready to chuck this up and turn it. And I say chuck, we're actually not going to use a chuck. I would normally use a chuck, but I want to show you that you can do this without a chuck by using double stick tape and a face plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drill a small hole in the center and I've marked it uh, for a half inch. And that'll help us center this uh, on the lathe.
to get some support. Now we're going to use this double sided tape, really, really strong stuff. We're going to put on two strips. Use my pocket knife to peel it off. And we're going to to mount this with the top against the face plate and then we're going to shape the bottom and then we're going to turn around and use that hole I just drilled uh, for a, uh, a drill chuck, uh, a screw chuck that we're going to, going to make. So first thing we do is, is go back over to the, to the lathe and get this mounted. So we take the face plate and I didn't explain it very well, the face plate's got a little about a four inch uh, uh, circle of uh, plywood that's mounted on with screws so we just simply put this on. Use my live center and we're going to use the live center to get this squared up. We're gonna, to get that to hold, we're going to leave that there for a few minutes. And to get a little stronger hold, what I'm actually going to do is back this off and use the entire quill to get a little larger surface. against it. And we're going to give that about uh, we're going to give that about 10 minutes and then we'll be ready to go. But I know some of y'all might have concerns about about this for safety reasons, so I want to show you a little simpler trick to, that might be a confidence builder first. Okay, before we use um, double stick tape on the stool, we're going to turn this plug as kind of a confidence builder. So if none of y'all have used double stick tape before, uh, this will help build your confidence because it is quite strong. Uh, this is not carpet tape. This is a Turner's tape and it's just very powerful. So the first thing we do, we're going to mark us uh, the center on here to help us uh, center this with the tailstock. This is what the tape looks like. This was $17 when it was bought more than eight years ago. I got it used with my mini lathe and I I've used very little of it, but when I do, it's, uh, it's, it's really strong stuff. So let's cut off a little square. So we're going to put one piece here. And this stuff is the devil to get the uh, protective side off, so I use a little pocket knife to kind of fix. There we go. And this is a cloth tape. Knife away. Now we're going to bring up tailstock support. Square it up. And now we're going to crank it down. And we're going to let it sit for about 10 minutes because that dramatically increases the strength. Then we're going to turn it. Okay, even though we've got good tailstocks, uh, even though we got good support, we're going to go ahead and leave the tailstock uh, as, uh, to hold this as long as possible. We're going to use a half inch spindle gouge to just kind of rough this, turn it around a little bit. Okay.
check the size. That looks good. Go ahead and take a thin parting tool. And part it off. And then we've got a nice little decorative feature. So, first thing we're going to do is turn this at a moderate speed. Since it's fairly large. We're going to use a bowl gouge. This is side grain, not in grain, or rather face grain, so we would not use a spindle roughing gouge on this. This is like a bowl, a bowl turning. The grain is running this way. this profile. We changed to a different bowl gouge. One with a longer grind on it. Make it a little easier on these pull cuts. Now because of this 15 degree angle, I think what I want to do is, is angle this back a little bit right here so I get a little better placement. You'll be able to see it better when I get, when I get going. So I'm going to, in other words, the leg is going to be angled like this. So I'm going to bring this back in just a little bit. I can get in there easily and I think I can almost almost do it maybe with a blunter grind and a shorter handle I'm turning it about uh, 900 I can turn it up a little bit because it does have tailstock support so it's not going anywhere. And I want to turn to that center line. this parting tool. further over. 
up a little bit. Soften that edge just a little bit. And you can see that profile will be a little bit better match for the leg. And I think I want to come back here and do sanding off the camera and then we will reverse this and okay now we're going to take it off of this uh, now that I've sanded it we're going to take it off of this face plate and you can see how strong it is. We're going to pull. And there we go. And that took some definite pulling. And you can see it pulled off some. It's about to rip our faceplate apart. Now, we're going to mount it with a screw chuck. I'm, I'm using about a quarter inch by one inch uh, lag bolt. Uh, it's going to go in from the back, and I'm going to use a screwdriver or a nut driver to get it in there. The key when you make these is, is make sure you get that whole drill dead on center. And now we're going to. Screw this on here like this. Screw it on. And I think we got it. I like to rub a little paraffin. Sometimes it makes it easier to get these things loose. Now, hold that in place. Mm, it's on there. And uh, these are some holes, don't ignore these, this is I drew this before I start the video. Uh, I'm going to give this some um, tailstock support while we do some dishing and then I'll remove the tailstock support uh, as we start uh, removing the center. We're going to first uh, taper the edge, then we're going to dish the inside. Then we'll finish up the very middle. We're going to dish it down to oh, three eighths to maybe a half an inch. But first, let's round over the edge.
sand and take care of the rest of that. Now we're going to dish it out some, just to make it a little more comfortable seating. And the rest of it I'll sand up to uh, 220 grit uh, with my uh, Harbor Freight uh, angle, angle drill uh, off camera. Okay, we're ready to do the legs. First thing we're going to do is mark centers, brace our fingers a little bit, give us a little smaller target to shoot at as we use our center punch. We simply get a center punch with that smaller square. It's pretty easy to get it in the middle. Do that on both sides. Okay, mount it between centers. I'm using a safety center here. Uh, this point doesn't have a spring behind it. And this is uh, about three quarters uh, diameter. So we're going to kind of use that to size the bottom. I tend to brace my hand on the rest sometimes, makes it a little easier to get this thing held in place to get the live center right on the mark. Square this up. Always turn your wood to make sure it clears. I want to cut right about on center. And away we go. We're going to get it round first. Since it's safely mounted between centers, we're going to get this up to about 2,000. Take a little small cut down. We get about two inches from the end, we change directions in case there's a crack. We don't want a big splinter coming off. moving pretty fast so we're getting a very rough cut with some ripples but we're just roughing so that's okay. Now we can come back slow down a little bit. Slower 
more we go, the smoother the cut. I notice my tool is not cutting as sharp as it could. It's not dull, but it's not cutting as sharp as it could. So we know if it's almost sharp, it'll almost cut. So I'm going to step over to the grinder and do a quick touch up on the bevel. And we're back. Okay, now we're going to size this. We're going to make this a very simple shape with no extra features. It's going to be kind of a cigar shape. So by using this to size at three quarter inch, I'm going to get this down to oh, close to seven eighths. Then I'm going to take the skew and just do a little bit of a chamfer. And we're going to take a planing cut, anchor, bevel, cut. We're going to make our tenon one inch. I'm just going to go ahead and use a wrench to kind of size that, get approximate. That will take care of it. We'll use the wrench to approximate, do a quick rough measurement. And we're going to bring that tenon down with, a, uh, with our parting tool and I'll just simply move this here. I haven't sharpened this, I'm just using it to very, get a very rough size. Now I know we're pretty close. Get the rest of it to that diameter. And we'll just use this, kind of put a little chamfer on the end. We'll do our initial rough size. Um, we'll use it against a stool, but I'm going to uh, uh, show this little template with screw holes. This makes it a little uh, easy to size, and we can tell that's pretty close. So let's go ahead and try it on our stool. I don't know if they were drilled with the same hole, but you do want to make uh, use your test fit. And I think that one's just right on the money. Yep. Now all we're going to do is taper this down and do a little more smoothing cut. Relocate our center, get a little bit closer. We'll use our skew for this. Anchor, ride the bevel, slowly lift the handle till it cuts, A, B, C.
touch the back, don't touch the top, don't want to engage it. Looks like the way the grain is moving a little bit, I'm going to take my cuts from here to here to finish that smoothing. I think I think that's got it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to sand this off the uh, uh, off the lathe, and then if you get a more complex design, you could actually take the first one and move it behind your lathe within your eyesight, and then it's easier to keep your features the same. Since this has so few features, we don't have to be concerned about it. And we'll be discussing this more in a third video I'll be doing in this series on duplicating legs. Uh, so you might want to stay tuned for that. And while I mention, if you're enjoying this, I encourage you to be a subscriber and watch my other videos. I'm going to go ahead and finish the other legs. Then we're going to go to the next step of assembling the stool. Okay, I just signed my name to the bottom with a... Uh, wood burning pen. Um, when you go to assemble this, always do a dry glue up. Wipe the glue off, uh, not to interfere with your finish. Tap these in. Make sure you got tight joints. I tend to use a mallet. This might be a nice project. It did blow a mallet. Um, you can see at the bottom I put our little feature to block that hole. Uh, if you've got any imperfections on the leg, Turn them to the inside so they won't be as uh, obvious. It's especially important if you're a production turner and you're making these for craft shows or something. Um, what else? The For finish. Uh, put on your favorite finish. I like Minwax Antique Oil Finish. Uh, you can get it at Ace Hardware. If they don't have it, they'll order it for you. So this is good stuff. Uh, wipe on Poly would also be a, a good choice. So uh, there we are for... For our nice three stool project. Um, hope you enjoyed it. The next one's going to be on a four uh, four legged stool with with rungs, and that brings increased complex uh, complexity in drilling the holes and 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 assembly. Uh, and you want to put some more design features in it. So I hope you'll watch that. And uh, here's a picture of of what that looks like. Again, uh, you can see my my granddaughter i.e. the shop fairy uh, several years ago enjoying her stool. So thanks for watching. Again, if you enjoyed it, I hope you subscribe and come back and visit.